So we just discussed how T cells and B cells become mature and how they develop and how they uh, tolerate, it's called self-tolerance or immunological tolerance, central and peripheral tolerance and how cells can or learn, how the immune cells learn not to destroy all the other tissues around them because they are designed to destroy things. So now we can talk about the mechanisms of autoimmunity and there's two parts and before I continue this video is going to be very vague because the mechanisms of autoimmunity is very vague we don't know a lot about it. There is genetic susceptibility there's a component of that because we know that identical twins uh, there's more in common with the, ge the these autoimmune diseases and genetical twins than uh, you know twins that are not identical and they we know that there's a lot of familial uh, inherited diseases so if your dad has a certain autoimmune disease well you might be more likely to get it and so we know that they run in families and so there's there's some part of genes. We don't know exactly how much, but there is a genetic component to autoimmune disease. Another part is there's infection and tissue damage component to autoimmune disease. And so this, this diagram is an attempt to illustrate these two parts. We know that there are susceptibility genes that are on your DNA and somehow there's a failure of these T cells to get uh, properly trained or, or properly uh, mature and they are self-reactive lymphocytes. They slip through the process. Uh, they, you know, they're not trained properly. And in the last video we talked about the AIR, A-I-R-E, uh, protein or gene and how this is kind of a, ma a manager of this, the, uh, the process of m maturation in the thymus. And so when we knock out this part of the gene, then we know that autoimmune diseases are more likely. So there is a component of that. And so let me just kind of, before we jump into this infection and tissue damage, let's just kind of go over to this picture. And so, this is the HLA uh, or major histability complex. So on human chromosome number six, and just kind of as a reminder, there is 23 chromosomes. Now this doesn't correspond to chromosome one, chromosome two. I just numbered these to make so you know verification that yes, indeed you do have 23 pairs. You get. You know, this could be moms, and this could be dads, this could be moms, this could be dads. You get 23 individual chromosomes from your mom, and 23 individual chromosomes from your dad. So total you have, do the math, <laughs> 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes. So on human chromosome 6, either either inherited from your mom or your dad, Oh, I'm sorry if you can't see that down there. Hopefully you can just see what I did. 23 from your mom and 23 from your dad, which is a total of 46 uh, pairs, or 46 chromosome, 23 pair. And so on human chromosome number six, in a section of this chromosome, there is this HLA loci, or this you know portion if you will of this chromosome where all the major histability complex molecules are coded and so you know there's just these different portions and this is so like I said in the last video you know portions of your DNA get read and then they get transcribed uh, then they get translated into a protein and this is how the genetic blueprint is kind of the uh, you know the blueprint if you will of your body and so on chromosome six there's this HLA uh, loci and these are where these major histability complex proteins are made and this are kind of the blueprints so what they found let me just scroll down here 
So what they found is they founded the, found an association of HLA uh, portions. If there's a problem with that, or if you have a specific allele with an autoimmune disease. So you, if for example, if you have an HLA B27 allele, your uh, 90 to 100 percent more likely to have ankylosing spondylitis and this is relative risk and so if you don't understand what relative risk is or odds ratio relative risk is a ratio of the probability of the event occurring in the exposed group versus a non-exposed group it's pretty much just say what are your chances and so you can think of it like that. If you have an HLA B27, you're 90 to 100 percent more likely to develop ankylosing spondylitis than someone who doesn't have this allele. If you have the HLA B27, you are 14 times more likely of getting post gonococcal arthritis than someone that doesn't have this allele. And you can go down the list with, you know, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Sojourn syndrome, type B, type 1 diabetes, high 21 hydroxylase deficiency. These are all of these alleles. If you if they're on your chromosome six, they, six they can do serological testing uh, to see if you have that allele. And if you do, then these are your relative risks. You don't have to memorize these. There's a chart you can look up, but just kind of get the concept that there are some components of autoimmune diseases that are genetically susceptible and let's move into the infection or the tissue damage so when you get infections or somehow the tissue gets damaged you know little pieces of your uh, cells are going to be broken off and this you know, macrophage this antigen presenting cell antigen present ant APCs or antigen presenting cells are just any type that has uh, that displays uh, these antigen or these antigens so this little piece is going to get broken off it's going to get gobbled up and then it's going to display on here well because you didn't have a f you somehow this T lymphocyte slipped out of the thymus or if it's a B cell, it slipped out of the bone marrow without being completely mature, and so there are kind of there's a little bit of component of self re self reactivity. Well, it's going to start mounting if it's a B cell antibodies to that protein, which might be of your cell, part of your cell, or it might be if it's a T cell, it might if it's a cytotoxic T cell, it might just kill this cell and then kill all the cells that pr display this this peptide or this protein but if it's a CD4 plus cell it will sec secrete cytokines and it will assist the immune system in killing anything that displays this uh, protein so then you uh, can imagine that these active self-reactive lymphocytes get activated and then they start killing the tissue which is in the case autoimmune diseases and there's several different kinds so that's it that's kind of all we know about the mechanisms uh, you can read more about that I'm sure there's a lot more information about that but for our intent and purposes this is just kind of a basic idea of the mechanisms of autoimmunity see you in the next video